Hello! Today we're going to start talking about scale copies in a little bit more detail. Yesterday we figured out that a scale copy needs to be the same shape, even if it's a different size. But today we're going to figure out what does that actually mean, because sometimes things that look like they might be the same shape uh, still are not exactly the same shape. So we're going to start with these three railroad signs. Uh, this is the kind of thing you might see in a railroad crossing. And with this kind of uh, sign, it's important that you have things that are the same shape because you don't want to confuse people when they get up to that railroad crossing. Otherwise, they might go and be in the middle when a train comes. So first, we want to look at our original and then look at our two copies and think about what in these parts fit with each other. Those are what we call corresponding parts. So a corresponding part is something that is in the same place across multiple images. And I'm very slowly writing out what that means, or what that, <laughs> what that word is. It corresponds. Okay, so we've got several instances of corresponding parts here. Um, we've got the X, which corresponds with the X in our two copies. We also have uh, this R right here, which corresponds to the R right here and the R right here. And then we can also look at points, and that lets us start to talk about things like angles, which is pretty nifty. So we have like point L, which corresponds to point B, which corresponds to point V. So I can start looking at specific lengths or specific arcs, curves, or specific angles and saying, what do I notice? Do they have the same shape or not? So let's look at angle KLM, this angle right here. If I look at that and I look at its corresponding parts here, ABC and angle UVW, I can start to notice some things. If I look at this one and I were to take a protractor or if I were to trace over it, I would see that this is a right angle and a angle ABC is also a right angle, so it's the same angle measure. When I come over to angle UVW, it's an acute angle but not a right angle, so it is not the same angle as the other ones. What if I look at a different one? Um, let's look at angle NOP. That also is a right angle, and if I come over to DEF, it is also a right angle. When I come over to XYZ, it is wider than a right angle. It is an obtuse angle. It is not the same angle measurement as these others two. And then if I look at the arcs or the curves around it, this shape curves into what looks like a perfect circle, even though I just made it much less perfect. In copy one, it is also a circle. But in copy two, it's been stretched out into more of an oval. So also not the same shape. So we can look both at angle measures and also at other corresponding parts such as the curves or the lines to determine are two things actually scaled copies. Copy one is a scale copy. Copy two is not a scale copy of the original. So we didn't have to use any numbers here, but we can use actual measurements. Um, let's try something that does have a bunch of measurements. So we're going to look at some triangles. We have our original, O, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight copies, well, potential copies. Um, and we want to figure out if they're scale copies. So we're going to look at this, and we're going to see if there's anything that we can cut out right away. So if I think about angles, something that I notice is that this has that nice, pretty easy to read right angle. We've got a right angle here, got a right angle here, here here, here, and here, and they all have a right angle and then two angles that are not right, that are acute. So these are all candidates. There is no right angle here, which tells me that the shape has been changed, so A is not a scale of copy. F has the same issue going on, but the angle has changed, so it cannot be a scale of copy. So we have some candidates. Now we need to go back to what we talked about in our last lesson. We thought about how the parts are related to each other. We figured out if the relationship between the parts in a shape isn't the same across multiple copies, then they're not scale copies. So looking at the original, we know that we have 3, 4, and 5 as our side lengths. None of the side lengths are the same. So if I go and I find one where the side lengths are the same, like in H, I have 2 and 2, 
that's not the same relationship that I have in the original. So this cannot be a scale copy. So we can also mark out this guy is definitely not a scale copy. <laughs> Looking at the other ones, we want to try to find relationships that are the same. So if I look from the 3, 4, 5 to this corresponding 3, 4, 5 over here, nothing has changed. It is an exact copy. An exact copy counts as a scale copy. It's exactly the same. Looking at 6, 8, 10, so the corresponding side lengths in E, it just looks like everything has doubled in length. 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 2 is 8, 5 times 2 is 10. So this one's just gotten twice as big. Over here, it's the opposite. 3 has been cut in half, now we have 3 halves. 5 has been cut in half, 5 halves. 4 has been cut in half, 4 halves. So this has been halved. So that's a scale copy. Hmm, looking at these ones though. So C looks longer. It looks like it's been pulled. And we can see if we can find a relationship to confirm that this is not a scale copy. So in B, it was a kind of a times one situation. In E, it was a times two situation. And in D, it was a times one half situation. So is there something that we can do to get from triangle O to triangle C? Well, three, I would have to actually cut down. I would have to make smaller in some way to get to two. But four, I would have to make bigger in some way to get to five. So is there anything that I could multiply 3 by that would make it smaller and 4 by that would make it bigger? No. Either everything's going to get bigger or everything's going to get smaller. So this has been pulled. It is not a scale copy. So that leaves us with this one, G. It looks similar to the other ones. It doesn't look like it's been spread. It doesn't look like it's been squished in any way. So now we need to figure out what's happening that's getting from O to triangle G. So 3 has gone down to 2. 4 has gone down to 8 thirds, which would be the same as 2 and 2 thirds. So it's gone down. That's really bad. Sorry. And 5 has gone down to 10 thirds which is also going down. So the question is how much down did we go? Um, three to two looks like the easiest one to deal with because we're going from a whole number to a whole number. So I wanna think about side relationships here. It was three, now it is only two long. So how could we cut that up? Well, we're saying that this is two and we're saying that this was Three. So we could say three units is now two units. How much of the three units are these two units? Well, that's two out of three, which would be the same as two thirds. So we could say that triangle G's lengths are two thirds triangle E's lengths. And we could write that as three, well, that's real bad. Sorry. 3 times 2 thirds is going to give me a side length of 2. Well, let's check that with the others. If we do 5 times 2 thirds, that's like 5 over 1 times 2 thirds, that would be 10 thirds. Ooh, that checks off. Good. And if we do 4 times 2 thirds, that would be like four holes times two thirds, which would be eight thirds. So that checks off. So our scale factor for this one is going to be times two thirds. So each of these things, and we're going to kind of clear this, we're going to clear this up a little bit. Um, in each of these, we had something that I want to call a scale factor. And a scale factor is telling you how much has that shape changed? Why won't you let me write on you? A scale factor. So this is telling you how the size of that shape is changing. We say factor because a factor is something that you multiply. And if you notice, we were multiplying 
even the things where we said, oh, it's like cutting it in half or dividing by two, we ended up multiplying it by one half. That would work. So you could have a scale factor that is times one. That would be keep it the same. You could have a scale factor that's times two. That's going to double all of your lengths. And if you have something that's like a scale factor of one half, that is going to have all of your scale, all of your side lengths. So every side length is now going to be half the original size. Scale factor is a way that we can be sure we have scale copies. If you can find a scale factor, then yes, you have a scale copy.